Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are uh, dialing into this from. Uh, that was a really interesting talk before this. Uh, the talk I'm going to do is a lot less uh, down in the weeds of things um, and much more looking at the kind of stuff that you can build at a, at a higher level. Um, so it's around building streaming data pipelines. So it's a Kafka meetup. Um, I'm making the assumption we all know kind of what Kafka is broadly. But I want to show you the kind of things you can use Kafka for that people don't always realize you can build fairly simply using Kafka and the surrounding ecosystem. So I usually start this talk with a whole bunch of slides and talking about like why you want to do this thing and like all the different components. But I'm going to try switching it around today and I want to show you it all in action first and then we'll do kind of like take a step back and look at the different pieces that I've shown you. So I want to walk through just like a fairly common scenario that people have with data in Kafka. So we kind of start off with, we've got some data that someone's written into a topic. It's a website, there's like reviews being left on the website or something like that. And this data in the topic, people say, oh, we want to be able to analyze this data somewhere else. And sometimes the instinct is like, we've got data in a Kafka topic. So let's write ourselves a Kafka consumer and we can take the data and we can go and write it somewhere else. So we've got data in a topic. So here I'm using something called KSQL DB, which I'll explain at length in a moment. But for now, I'm just using it as a consumer. I'm just using it to browse the topics on my Kafka cluster. We've got a topic called ratings. And I can use the, a consumer here. I can say print ratings. It says here is your live stream of data. And we've got this data just like ticking into the system. And it's useful data. It's real time data. Let's analyze it. Let's look at the kind of reviews that people have been leaving and break it down by certain different factors. So to start off with, we're actually going to use something called Kafka Connect to stream this data down to a target system. So instead of having to write some code, we can just do this. We can write uh, a SQL statement. It's wrapping around Kafka Connect. And if you don't want to use KSQL DB, you can just write this JSON and send it to a REST endpoint directly. But it's all just like configuration that we're giving it. We're not having to write any code as such. So we've got this topic called ratings, and we're going to go and send it over to uh, Elasticsearch in this instance. So we've got data in a Kafka topic, and we're going to stream it into Elasticsearch because Elasticsearch is one of those great places where you can just analyze your data nice and easy. So if we say show connectors and have a look at that and see if it's working, it says it is, which is always useful for a live demo. And so we're going to head over to Elasticsearch, and we've got something called Kibana on top of it, and we're going to have a look at this data. So we can see we've got an Elasticsearch index called ratings. And we're going to say we'll create a, uh, an index pattern against that. We've got a timestamp field and create an index pattern. So if you're not familiar with it, Elasticsearch, it's a, a document store, I think is, the, is what they call it. Uh, it's a, people use it for search, people use it for analytics, but it's great for this kind of thing because you can just chuck data at it and it's not fussy about the data that it's receiving. It'll do its best to store that data for you. And you can see down here, you've got like different data types and stuff like that. But we've chucked the data in. We saw the configuration was pretty minimal. We said, from this topic to this place here and a couple of uh, specific configurations for Elasticsearch. And now we can go and have a look at the data. So we can say, here's my ratings information. And we can say, who is the, uh, the user and what was the channel they used? What was the message? And it's just kind of like ratings information. You can see you've got a user ID here. So like, let's make that a bit bigger. User ID two, user ID nine. Which device did they use? What was the message? What was the star rating? So on a scale of one to five, what was the rating that they left? And we can tell Kibana to refresh that page, we can say every second. And now that'll start ticking over. And if I put that at the top of the screen, okay, we can see here. And at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to do that print statement again. And you'll actually see, if you look at the, uh, the rating ID, if we add that in here as well. So here's our rating ID over here on the, uh, the right hand side, 5328, down here, 5338. For, so you've got basically a near real-time copy of the data as it arrives in the Kafka topic, streaming over to Elasticsearch. So this is a very, very important piece of the pipelines that we build, getting data from Kafka to other places, and we can just do it with a bit of configuration. You can do the same thing coming in the other end, like ingesting data into Kafka, and we're going to see that in a moment as well. But now let's have a little look. I'm just going to pause this thing because it will kill my web browser if I leave that uh, refreshing. So let's stop that refresh there. Let's head over back to my terminal and have a look at this thing called key SQL DB that I was talking about. 
So KSQL DB is part of Confluent Platform. Uh, it's community licensed and it runs on the data that you have in your Kafka topics. You can use it for building out stream processing pipelines. You can also use it for querying the data manifested within KSQL DB itself. So you can do key value lookups against the state that we persist within, within KSQL DB and I'll show you that later on. So to start off with, let's build some streaming data pipelines with it. Let's do some filtering on the data. So what I've got down here, if I show you this, is a cheat sheet. So this is all on GitHub. I'll share the links and so on afterwards. I'll tweet it if you follow me on Twitter. Um, I'll put it on the Meetup page. I'll put it wherever you can find it. I'm sure you'll be able to track it down. So you can actually try this demo out for yourself. So what we're going to do is we're going to say within KSQL DB, let's model that Kafka topic that we had. So here's our Kafka topic here, it's called ratings, and the data is an Avro. And that's really important because Avro is one of the formats that we could use, including protoboth, including uh, JSON schema, where we have a schema declared and stored in a schema registry. Because it means when we come to use the data, we can say create stream ratings, and a stream is just a Kafka topic with a schema. And we can say create stream, and then we can say describe that stream. So describe ratings, and it says, there's your schema. And it's got the schema because we stored that schema when we were writing that data into the topic. So using something like Avro, Protoboff, JSON schema, super important because it makes our lives much easier in using that data. So we've got the different fields within that data and we can apply projections to it. So instead of saying, just run a consumer against this topic, just like deserialize it and dump the entire contents to the screen, which is what a print statement does. Print is just a consumer. Here's this data, it ticks on by all the different fields within the message and the key and the, the uh, timestamp. Instead, let's clear the screen there, we can actually do a select and pick particular columns we're interested in. Just show me the user ID, the stars, the channel and the message from this particular stream. And this thing, thing called emit changes, which means shows the changes as they happen. So now we're taking a live Kafka topic and we're inspecting the messages as they come in and just projecting certain fields from that schema. And we can select those fields and we can filter on those fields. If you look at this field here, this is the, the channel, the device that was used to leave the particular review. You've got Android, you've got iOS and so on, Android, web. You've also got this one here, dash test. So let's imagine for whatever reason, we've got different environments populating the same topic, or maybe it's the, the production environment, but you've got some test clients or whatever. And we actually want to create a Kafka topic of messages only matching where it's not test data. So only the live data. We can actually do this really easily using key SQL DB with a single uh, SQL statement. So if we have a look at this, we're going to select the same fields as before from ratings as before, but with the predicate where channel sent to lowercase is not like test with wildcards either side of it. So now we select all of the messages from that topic where the channel doesn't have test in it. So we've got all of our live messages now, and we can persist that out to a new Kafka topic. So KSQL DB at the end of the day is basically a producer and a consumer of Kafka topics with a bunch of abstractions, which means that you just use SQL to work with it. But under the covers, we're consuming from a Kafka topic. And when we do this and put it on the beginning, create, create stream ratings live as, we're now going to go and create a Kafka topic of the same name and populate that topic. So if I say show topics, it says, oh, you've got a new topic here called ratings live. And if I run a consumer against it, so print that topic, it says, here are those fields that you asked for. So just those particular fields, the user ID, the stars, the channel, and the message. And if you look down that channel list there, and leave it running, you'll see that there are no test messages coming through to that. And perhaps we do want those test messages, but let's send them to a different topic. So now we'll just say create stream ratings test as select those same fields and we'll change the predicate where lowercase channel is like test with wildcards either side of it. So now we're taking a single Kafka topic and we're splitting it into two different topics based on the contents. And if you think about this from a data engineering point of view, we've not had to write any code as much as we might love writing Java or whatever, we've not had to do that. We've had to write a SQL statement that said, create this stream, declare the stream against the original topic. And they've written two more SQL statements saying, create another topic over here populated by this SQL statement, create another topic over here populated by that SQL statement. 
So you can build these case equal DB applications to do really useful stuff against the streams of data that you've got flowing in your business. It doesn't have to be super complex stream processing, and it, it can be, but it can also be simple stuff like, well, we've got this topology going on here. We've got applications downstream that need certain sets of data. We can just build these little stream processes, a little SQL here, a little SQL there. I'll talk very briefly later on about how we actually go about deploying KSQL DB. Now let's have a little look at what else we can do with this. So we've done filtering the data. We can do joining. We can do aggregations. We can do enrichment. We can change the schema. We can change the serialization. So in this data, we've got the user ID field. And if we head back over to Kibana, so this Kibana is where we just dumped that original ratings data over to. We just said, take all of the data that comes into our live topic and send it over there. And over there, we can see what user ID. So user ID 5, user ID 18, we know nothing about that user. Or rather we do, because we have data elsewhere in our business about our users. We have like a master table saying like user ID 5 is called Bob, user ID 18 is called Sarah, and this is their email address, and this is maybe their, what kind of uh, customer they are, are they a really loyal customer, and so on and so on. And when we're looking at data, when we're analyzing data, or even when we're using this data downstream to drive other applications, we usually want to know more about it than we have just in that normalized data set that we get through. So let's see how we can actually uh, enrich that data and denormalize that data with other information. So we're going to head back to KSQL DB and we're going to clear the screen. And we're actually going to create ourselves another prompt over here which is going to look exactly like this, if I can find my copy and paste. I'm going to load up um, MySQL. So let's see if I've got it on my clipboard over here. So Control R and Bash is super, super useful because you've typed it before. You do Control R and start typing it, and it says, actually, here's what you ran before. So here's MySQL, and we're going to have a look at the tables that we've got. So we say, show tables, table called customers. So here's our information about our users. It's in MySQL here, it could be an Oracle, SQL Server, any relational database, or indeed anywhere else that we've got a connector for Kafka Connect, and we can suck that data in. So a message queue, a flat file, anywhere else. So in this case, it's a relational database, it's in MySQL, and we've got information like this about our users. We've got information about their name, their email address, and then this club status. They're like VIP uh, thing, like kind of loyalties thing. Are they a bronze customer, silver, um, platinum, bronze, and whatever? So we can use that information also in our reporting and say, like, what kind of users are more likely to leave negative reviews? Or which of our platinum users have been leaving really good reviews? And like, we're going to reward them even further for being happy. Or we're going to look at ones who are leaving negative reviews and see if we can do something to make them more happy. So let's bring that information in to KSQL DB. So now I've switched prompts back and we're back in KSQL DB. DB over here. I'm going to use Kafka Connect again, and we use Kafka Connect with a little bit more of a complex configuration this time than we saw before with Elasticsearch. This time we've got more configuration. We're using a MySQL connector because it's MySQL that we're connecting to. We've got information here. Here's how you connect to the database. Here's the table that we'd like to ingest. Here's some other bits and pieces that we're going to do. So that sets up the connector. Again, you could just use the REST endpoint of Kafka Connect directly if you'd rather. I'm just using KSQL DB because it's just one interface to do all of this stuff through. We say show connectors, and it says it's running. Now we say show topics. It says, oh, you've got a new topic called customers. So in our customers topic, we've got information about our customers. Let's say print uh, customers. We're going to quote it this time and say from beginning. Because remember, Kafka stores data. So we're going to go back to the beginning of the topic and say, here's all of the data in that topic so far. And you've got information about the customers, you've got their first name and their last name and so on. So now we're going to declare that topic within KSQL DB. I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. We're going to say we're going to create a table in KSQL DB. Last time we created a stream. We had a stream of ratings information and we said create a stream, which is just a Kafka topic with a schema. Now we're creating a table. It's also backed by a topic. So everything in KSQL DB is backed by Kafka topics. We can just choose to model that data differently. We can say, here is a stream of events, and we will model it as a stream of events, an unbounded um, stream of events. We can also take an unbounded stream of events in a Kafka topic and model it as state, as key value state, as a table. So let's do that here. And you can actually model the same topic as both. 
Uh, but for now, we're just going to model it as a table. So create a table. Um, we've got a primary key in that table because it's key value, so you have to have a key against this particular topic here, and it's in Avro again. Create the table, done that. Describe customers. There's information about our customers. And we can query it. We can say, well, let's go back to the beginning of the topic. So we can set the offset back to the earliest, and then we can query it. So show me information from customers. And it says, well, there is the information about your customers. They've got IDs, they've got names, they've got email addresses, and so on. It's a live snapshot of what's in the database. And it's a live snapshot. If I split my screen now, and let's fire up my SQL again. And let's make some changes in the database. So at the top of the screen here, we're querying our key SQL DB table. And if I go into my SQL here and create a new customer record, which obviously would usually happen by like an application doing insert into the table or whatever, but we're just doing that insert DDL directly. We can see we've got a new user created in that MySQL table, which change data capture is streaming directly into our Kafka topic. And the Kafka topic drives the key SQL DB table. And we can also pick up changes. So we can pick up inserts, we can pick up updates. So we change the record again, we see the record gets updated in key SQL DB. And over here in key SQL DB at the top of the screen, if I query that table for the state and say, what's the state uh, where ID is 42? So just show me this user that we've created. It says, here is the current state. The current state is this user here with this email address that we added there. These two rows here are the changes in state. We said emit changes to so tell me as the state changes. So first off, we created the user and we missed off their email address. So we did an update and we got the new update through. Whereas when you query the table, it has one state within it. Now that state might change, so it will emit that state. This is called a push query. It pushes those changes to you. We're going to have a look later at something called pull queries, where you can actually do key value lookups against k SQL DB and say, well, what's the current state for that key? And just give me that value back. But for now, we're talking about push queries. And we can see if we continue to change things in the database at the bottom here, change something in the source database, that status gets reflected in k SQL DB. So obviously, Rick needs to be a platinum customer, so we make that change again in the source database. k SQL DB reflects that straight away. If we query that table again, it says, here is the current state of that key, and the current state is there's our full record. And if we go down to MySQL and run pretty much the same query against that, oh, doesn't like that, so we're going to call it that. It says, in MySQL, there's the exact same state. So you can have state in one place mirrored into a Kafka topic and model that as a table in key SQL DB. Why would you even want to do that? Because once you've done that, you can do this. In case SQL DB, let's just bring that window out there. We can say, I would like to join my stream to my table. So here is my join. We're going to select from that ratings stream, every single event as it comes in, and we're going to do a join to our customers. So our customer information is held in a table. Well, it's actually held in a topic back by events but we're modeling it as a table, we're modeling it as key value state. So we can do a join between those reviews as they come in, who is the user, bring in information about the user. This is all, here is that enriched information. Let's pause the screen for a moment. Here's our uh, review ID, there's the message, there's the device, here's the user and here's their status. So it's doing real time lookups against that state within that topic that was backed or populated by the database externally. And we can push that onto a new Kafka topic in its own right. So let's do that here. So we're going to run the exact same query, but we're going to say create stream and give it a new name. Here we're actually overriding the Kafka topic. So I've kept it very simple so far with those create stream as select statements. But you say create stream, uh, give it a different Kafka topic, change the replication factor, change the partition count, change the serialization format as you want to. So we've created that stream which means that we've now got a new Kafka topic. Show Kafka topics. Here is our Kafka topic called Ratings Enriched. I can say, describe the stream that we've just created. And it says, well, it's got a schema. It's got a schema that we've declared. It's got the customer ID. It's got information about the username and so on. You could also say, describe extended. It says, well, we've processed this many messages so far. 
This is the query that populates it. You can even go and run and explain against it if that's your kind of thing. If we page up here, we can see that we've got uh, what format are we serializing it to, what format's the key in, and so on. We've got all of this information. If I rerun it, so we've processed 7,081 7, messages so far. If I re-query it and say describe it again, we can see that message count's going up because we're processing more messages. And each message that comes in, we're joining it to the current status of that customer table in the database, but we're actually doing that join within KSQL DB itself. So we've written ourselves a little stream processing application. And we can take that even further. We can say, well, let's take that information and we're gonna process that data from uh, the stream we've just created. So ratings with customer data. Now let's filter it out even further. So you can daisy chain these things. You can say, well, first of all, split out the test and the live data. And that live data, we're gonna enrich with customer information. That in itself is useful to lots of people. So we write it back as a Kafka topic back onto the cluster. And now we've got other uses for that. We want to say, well, actually we want a separate Kafka topic where platinum users have left bad reviews because maybe we want to do something about that. We want to drive a notification application. That notification application, all it has to do is it subscribes to a Kafka topic saying, tell me when there's a message meeting this condition and I will do something. I will page our customer up team. I'll send a text to that particular user with a discount code or whatever we do to retain our customers. So we do that, we create a new stream, we've created a new stream, we've created a new topic, show topics. So here's our unhappy platinum customers topic. And we're populating that also. We can say print unhappy platinum customers. This is here is your unhappy platinum customers. We've got your value here. Um, and we've been filtering that down just for users, just for customers who are uh, platinum status based on that lookup from using the data from the database. Let's go and put this into Elasticsearch and see how that dashboard that we started off with can actually get a lot fancier. So again, create a sync connector. This time we're gonna push a couple of different uh, topics across. We send that over to Elasticsearch. We say show connectors to make sure that it's running, which it is. And if we head over to Kibana now and open this up, put that on the screen over here. This is using a pre-built dashboard, but populated using those topics that I've just sent over. So again, I'm the, well, I'll show you what we've got first and then I'll set it to refresh. But you can see we've now got uh, unhappy platinum customers that we've done that filtering of in advance. Some of this stuff you can do in Elasticsearch anyway. The denormalization bit makes a lot more sense upstream, but filtering streams of data you could do in Elasticsearch, but a lot of times you might want to prepare that data uh, ahead of time. I've shown you one way, you can do it other ways if you want to. We've got our unhappy platinum customers here. We do some nice visualizations, breaking this data down by the different characteristics. So these characteristics that were in the original source messages, these characteristics, we needed to get the two data sets brought together. So we've got the rating, like star rating one to five, but we've also got the type of customer or the customer status who left it. So breaking it down by their different club status. And then we've got the, the raw detail down here um, and some aggregations down here based on the different users. And if I set it to refresh and say refresh it every second and start that going. So the time over here in, in uh, Sony Yorkshire in the north of England is two minutes to four in the afternoon. So it's using my local uh, system timestamp. So you can see here the data as it's flowing into my Kafka topic. So 1558.29 there. It's moved already, we've got a new message already. So it's a live stream of changes arriving in the Kafka topic, being enriched with information that's a live replica of what's happening in the database, refreshing in near real time. We're streaming that, we're changing that within KSQL DB, writing it back to a Kafka topic, pushing those Kafka topics into Elasticsearch. We've done various bits of aggregation down here. We can see broken down by user, how many ratings have they left? broken down by device, who's been leaving ratings, broken down by club status, who's been leaving these things. And that kind of thing is based on the raw data that we've sent to Elasticsearch and used Elasticsearch's aggregation capabilities to summarize that up. So let's just close this or pause it because it'll kill my computer again. What about if we want to do that aggregation within KSQL DB itself? What about if we want to take a live stream of data from a Kafka topic and prepare aggregations against that data that we can then push down to other places, like push to a database, just the results of the aggregations as they change. 
or hold that aggregation state within case equal DB itself and do a key value lookup against it directly from an external application. So let me show you how you can do that. It's an aggregation. So we're going to use SQL's um, group by statement. So SQL's got aggregation capabilities. We can do counts, we can do sums, and we say the aggregation is going to be by this particular field here. When we create aggregations in KSQL DB, we, the resulting object is a table because tables are key value state and an aggregation is state for a given key because the key is our group by key, so like the user's name. And in this case, we're doing a windowed aggregation. We're saying per 15 minute block, how many ratings has each user left? So the key is gonna be our user plus that window uh, timestamp. So we create it as a table and they say, give us the username, how many ratings have they left? And then actually collect together all of the different ratings they've left within that slice of time. So we're going to create the table. I could just run the select if we just want it to dump it to the screen, but I'm actually going to send it as a table now. And with that table, we can query it. We can say, for this particular user, tell us about the ratings they've left. And you'll notice here, I've said emit changes, because this is what I was doing earlier. This is a push query. As, I, as the data changes in the underlying topic, in case equals DB aggregation updates, I want to see those changes. So hit enter and it says, here are all of the different windows. If I'm a page up, we can see here are the windows since the data started. So two o'clock um, BST, which is summertime, got 79 ratings and they broke down like this for that particular user, their star ratings, one to five. Those are the different ratings they left. And then each different 15 minute time window until we get to the current one, okay? Oh, sorry, it's not the British summertime, it's UTC. So it's uh, an hour earlier. So this is the current time window, starting at, five, at uh, three o'clock UTC. And it keeps changing. Well, it keeps changing because the data keeps changing. As new messages arrive, as Rika Blaisdell is busy on our uh, website, entering different reviews and leaving different star ratings, the aggregate changes. How many is this user left? Well, initially it was 11. But since then, they've been back to our website and they've left another four. So each time that aggregate changes, the state changes. So it emits it here. So we can subscribe to that stream of changes. Tell me about whenever it changes. Emit changes is the clause that we use on the SQL statement. What about if we just want to know here and now how many, have they, how many ratings have they left for this given time window and then give me control back? I just want to know a key value lookup. What's it change? What's the value? I don't want to kind of keep watching it and know if it changes. I just want to pull that value out of case equal DB because case equal DB is persisting that state. It's got an internal state store. These are stateful aggregations. I'll talk about case equal DB's deployment model in a moment, but it runs across different uh, nodes if you want it to. So it will be stateful. And if one dies, that state is still available for other ones to use. And that state we can query. So this is called a pull query. And it looks like this. In this case here, we're just going to look it up for a particular time window. So we say where the uh, window start is after, and we're in UTC, so we're going to say that. It says, okay, here are the two values matching that predicate that you've given us, where the, the username is Rika Blaisdell, and the window start is after half past two uh, UTC. So we've got this one here, and then this one here, and then it says query terminated. We've finished. We've given you the current value. Has it changed? I don't know, you'll have to rerun your query. This is just now like relational database territory. Has the data changed in my database? I don't know, I'll go and run my query again. I can run the query again and it says, yep, it has changed. It was 24 and now it's 31. If we have late arriving data, by the way, then this one might change. If we have some data that arrives which would fall into a different aggregate time window, then other ones will get uh, updated and when we query it, you'll see that change. Using key SQL DB, you can take this source data from a Kafka topic, you can join it, you can filter it, and so on and so on. You can build aggregations against it, and you can query that aggregate state directly using a pull query. So here I'm doing it from the um, key SQL command prompt, but there's also a REST API that you can use. So key SQL DB, it's got a REST API. It's also actually got a native Java client as of version 0.10 which was released just last week. So I've had a chance to try it out. Um, I'm actually not a Java coder, so I'm kind of lying if I was saying I will try it out, but I'm sure someone else will, and I'm sure it's great. 
But for me, I'm just going to use the REST API. Here I'm using Postman, but you can just submit it to the key SQL DB server's uh, REST endpoint, and we can say, give me this information matching this predicate. So let's change our predicate here. So it's going to be the uh, July the 6th, and it's going to be uh, greater than this. So select the same information as before, and we send that to KSQL DB, and it says, here is your data. You've done a key value lookup. This is any application in the world now that can speak HTTP. It's gone to KSQL DB. It said, tell me the value for this particular key. This is all, here is how many ratings this user has left. You say, run it again. Okay, now it's 49. But we're doing lookups against that particular key. We can also run uh, push queries from our application and say, I would like to know whenever that value changes, but we can also just do key value lookups like that. So that's the kind of thing you can do using KSQL DB, using Kafka Connect. So it's a hopefully fairly realistic pipeline, the kind of things that people want to do with the data. They want to filter streams of data, they want to join streams of data, they want to put it, take it from one place, bring it through Kafka, enrich it, put it to another place. Sometimes it's just particular patterns within that that you want to use, but all of this we're doing using Kafka Connect for the integration. I'm using KSQL DB for the stream processing. You can use Kafka Streams on which KSQL DB is built, and Kafka Streams is part of Apache Kafka, but a lot of this you can do without needing lots of other heavy lifting elsewhere. So that was the demo. Now let me walk through some slides and then we'll do some questions uh, if people have them. So I'll put all of these slides online. Uh, if you do the Twitters, uh, that's me at the bottom there, at arm off, and you can follow me there. Um, so the, the pipelines that we built, we built for different reasons. And people have different reasons for wanting to shift that data around. Sometimes it's fairly straightforward, just like database offload, or like we've got data in one place and we want to get it into another place. And so it's like typical data engineering type work. Take the data from here, shove it over there. We'll use Kafka because it acts as a very scalable, flexible broker in this pipeline. If one piece changes, the other piece doesn't need to. It's scalable, it applies back pressure, all that kind of good stuff. It also stores the data for us for as long as we'd like it to. So we can say, well, that data that comes in from the database, we can push it to S3, but that same data, we can push it to HDFS, for example but we're only extracting it from the database once. But the data that's coming from the database, a lot of the time, if we just take that raw data, the normalized data set most of the time, and shove it over to S3 or shove it to HDFS, what are we gonna do with it when it gets there? Well, we're probably gonna end up processing it. We're gonna end up taking those normalized tables and joining them back together. So you say, well, that data that comes from the database, it's got a set of tables within it. So instead of, taking it from there and writing it to there and then doing post-processing over there, why don't we say, well, as that data arrives in the source, we stream it into Kafka, we can do that joining and cleansing within Kafka, write it back onto another Kafka topic and stream that down to the target. So we can actually get our analytics out much sooner and we do that processing in one place. We also benefit from doing it like that because when the source changes and things invariably do change at some point, it becomes much easier to manage. Because we say, well, instead of everything originating from the database, we've decided to split out some of the functionality and the database doesn't hold everything anymore. Now we've got like, a service that's, been, that's new, has been created over here. That's where some of the information comes from. Well, it's just a Kafka topic. In the original example, we're populating Kafka topics from a database. And then we're doing stream processing against Kafka topics and taking Kafka topics and pushing them down to our target system. All we've got here is a different source for that Kafka topic. Maybe instead of Kafka Connect pulling it from a database, a new microservice is using the producer API to write that to the Kafka topic directly, but it's just Kafka topics. So it's fewer pieces to move around and change when something needs to get upgraded or, or replaced. So the way we go about building these things, we've got two different paths. We've got the integration piece and we've got the stream processing piece. Integration, we're gonna do using Kafka Connect. So Kafka Connect is part of Apache Kafka, and it lets us stream data in from systems upstream and from Kafka down to systems downstream. So you can use it for kind of just data integration, get data from this database and put it into that database or this message queue into that NoSQL store. But you can also use it for taking data from one place to drive a Kafka application or taking data that our own application is writing into Kafka and push that down to another target. 
It's just configuration to set up and use. So you can write the JSON uh, yourself. You can use something like KSQL DB or Confluent Control Center. There's other ways of managing it, but it's just configuration. You don't have to write any code. People sometimes think, well, okay, that's fine, but I quite like writing code. And like, it's, it's fun. It kind of makes me feel whole and complete and gives me reasons to do my job. But writing code for some things makes a lot of sense. Writing code to shift data around with Kafka and other systems is a solved problem because Kafka Connect does it. And it might sound simple. It might sound simple. I oh, will just pull the database and put it into there. Or oh, we'll take a Kafka topic and write a consumer and push it down to there. But when you start thinking about the different pieces involved, it gets fairly complex fairly quickly. And one of the really cool things that Kafka Connect does for you is it manages serialization and schemas. And there are various good ways of managing how you're going to serialize your data or serialization methods to use. And there are fairly crappy ways, and like some that somewhere in between. If you've got data flowing around, if you're building pipelines, you need to think about how you're going to manage your schema and the importance of managing those schemas carefully. So Kafka Connect, it just has what are called converters. And you say, oh, I'm going to use the Avro converter. And in that example I showed you with KSQL DB, we just said, okay, the data is in Avro. You never saw me having to type in a schema. You never had to type in like user ideas of Archer and this is a so-and-so and this is so-and-so. It's all done for you. It's managed by the Confluent Schema Registry. So using something like Avro, Protobuf, JSON Schema is a great way to go about building very solid data pipelines that are going to adapt, that are going to be flexible, and importantly, aren't going to be brittle, and everything breaks as soon as you change something. Kafka Connect, it's a framework. Again, writing your own sounds like fun, but it's been done for you. Um, you have pluggable pieces to it. You have connectors for different technologies. You have single message transforms, which we've not even really looked at. We, You'll have spotted them in the configuration earlier, maybe, but it lets you modify the data as it passes through the pipeline. And we have converters, which do the serialization and deserialization for you. You can get all of these different pieces off Confluent Hub. So you go along and you say, I want to integrate with uh, MongoDB. And it says, well, here are the connectors you can use for MongoDB. Here's the command to run it. or just install them in your worker for you. And workers are how we run Kafka Connect. So Kafka Connect, just like Kafka Streams or KSQL DB or anything else, they don't run on your Kafka brokers. Your Kafka brokers run on your Kafka brokers. Everything else runs separately in your production environment, on your development and your sandbox. It all runs wherever you want to, of course. But when you're thinking about how do I deploy this thing and what's it, kind of, what's it actually look like, you've got your brokers doing your brokering. You've got other stuff elsewhere. So Kafka Connect, a set of workers, one or many, and they run on their own uh, pods or containers or bare metal or how do you provision these things. You can have a standalone worker and you can have a distributed worker. And to make it really, really confusing, you can have a single node distributed worker. So I'm showing you standalone, but my advice would be don't use that unless you've got a specific reason to. Because you can have a distributed worker on a single node, so it's not scary, it doesn't mean like all distributed and scariness, it just means that when you come to scale it out, it's easier because you just say, I'm going to add in another one and everything else remains the same. If you want to switch from a standalone where you've got things like offsets and so on are stored on local files and you configure it a little bit differently. If you have a distributed worker, you just have one node, it's all fine, everything runs on there. You want to add a second one, you just say, I'm going to add a second worker in the same group ID and it just works. Um, it's fault tolerant. So if you lose one of those nodes, Kafka Connect will say, oh, I'm going to rejiggle the workload around and make sure it runs on the workers that are available. And you can have a cluster of Kafka Connect workers. You can have multiple clusters of Kafka Connect workers. It's entirely up to you how you deploy it. But Kafka Connect in distributed mode is my strong recommendation there. The second piece of building out a pipeline is the stream processing. The integration piece is a huge part of it, and Kafka Connect is great for doing it, but sometimes we want to do more with the data than simply shunt it from one place to another. So with that, we're going to use KSQL DB. And KSQL DB lets us address what's the common kind of things that we want to do with data. So if you imagine a data set that looks like this, it comes from a factory, and we've got all the, in, all the different robots in the factory, and they're all instrumented, and giving us lovely real-time feeds of data, and things like, the widgets as they come through, what's the weight when it goes through here, and what was the time it happened, and what's the temperature, and all this kind of good instrumentation type stuff. 
if you think about what we do with data, whether with this data set, with your business domain data set, with any kind of data set, you can actually boil it down to a few distinct patterns. You can say, as this data passes through, I would like to do something in response to it, whether like every single event or events that match a certain condition, or as the data comes through, I want to build up a picture of it. I want to kind of count up how many of these things happened in a certain time frame. Or actually, as it comes through, I want to count it up and I want to do something in response to that. Or sometimes, as this data comes through, I just want to shove it over there because I'm not sure what I want to do with it yet. I'm going to go and analyze it downstream. I'm going to run some ad hoc analytics against it. I'm going to do some machine learning against it. But that data as it comes in, put it over there. KSQL DB fits all of these different use cases. You can say KSQL DB says, well, it's going to run a select query and we want to do an alert against something. We want to filter it for a certain condition, select from the field, from the stream, where predicate, where this condition is true. Or we want to build an aggregation, select this aggregation from this particular stream here, or select this aggregation with a predicate as well. So we say, well, look at the average temperature of the machines. And if the temperature of a particular sensor goes above this, then go and trigger an alert. The output of each of these selects is a Kafka topic. So then you just write an application which subscribes to those topics and says, oh, there's a message here, I need to go and fire an alert. Or there's a message here, I need to go and build a dashboard against that. And KSQL DB also integrates with Kafka Connect. So you can say, well, as this data arrives in this topic here, go and write it over there. So I'll take this data as it comes in, go and write it to Snowflake DB. Take this data as it comes in, go and write it to Elasticsearch or wherever we want to store our data. I'm using KSQL DB as an example because SQL and databases are my kind of thing. KSQL DB is built on top of Kafka Streams. So if Java is more your thing, then you can go and do all of this using Kafka Streams, using Kafka Connect directly if you want to. But however you do it, the basic outline looks the same. So this is kind of like a fairly crude abstraction of what's actually going on, but it's all built around Kafka topics. Something gets written to a Kafka topic, KSQL DB acts as a consumer. So it reads that data, it applies a process to it. So we're going to filter it, we're going to aggregate it, we'll do something to it, we're going to write it back on to another Kafka topic. You can daisy chain them and say, well, now we've done that thing, we've filtered these things out, we've written it back onto a Kafka topic so that other people could use it. And then we're going to process it some more for some other condition or we're going to join it to something else. You might also say, well, that's fine. We've processed it. We've written it back onto Kafka. And now Kafka Connect pushes it downstream to drive some analytics. We're kind of like, we've done our processing on it and it goes down here. Or we've done our processing on it. We've picked out the conditions we're interested in. We've written them to a Kafka topic. Now our event-driven application over here, it subscribes to that topic. When it receives a message, it kind of goes and sets off an alarm and says, well, I've received this message, so we need to send off uh, an alert. But these microservices that we've got, maybe they want to be event-driven and subscribe into a topic and waiting for something to happen and do something in response. Maybe the same application, maybe a different application. It wants to know about the state within KSQL DB. So within KSQL DB, we set a SQL statement running. It's kind of like a materialized view, really. We say, well, select from this stream this particular aggregate statement. So KSQL DB is populating the aggregate internally within its own little state star. And our applications can run key value lookups against it. We can say, for this particular key here, what is the value? And KSQL DB says, well, this is the particular value. Excuse me. <coughs> So deploying KSQL DB, that, that's kind of what you go out using it for. But to deploy it, as I said before, like with Kafka Connect, KSQL DB does not run on your brokers. Kafka Streams does not run on your brokers. KSQL DB runs separately on a single node or on multiple nodes. So we can have one node here. We can scale it out. And if it's within the same KSQL DB cluster, it acts within the same consumer group. And Kafka does its Kafka thing and separates, it sends the workload split across them evenly. So KSQL DB, it's scalable, just like Kafka is. It's fault tolerant, just like Kafka is, because it actually maintains its own little state store for any stateful aggregations that you've got. So if you lose one particular node, other nodes will take over. What KSQL DB isn't is like your data warehouse. 
you can't do or you can but you shouldn't do great big ad hoc analytical queries against it that would be performed really badly that'd be a really bad idea and it's also not just like your big one data warehouse against which run all of your processing jobs excuse me um so you've got your ksql db you're not running one great big cluster to do all of your etl against what you actually do is it's much more about building applications. So we don't just say like, here is one great big cluster. Here's all of our like ETL, streaming ETL jobs. We actually say, well, we've got an application over here that needs to fill to this stream. We've got an application over here that's going to do some fraud processing. We've got an application over here that's going to process the orders. So you have your KSQL DB clusters that are kind of like applications. So my voice is giving up on me, so I'll give you some, uh, a few resources to be going away with, and then we can do some questions if my, uh, my voice is still going. One of the most useful links I can give you is this one. This is all sorts of different resources for learning more about Kafka. So you've got the uh, Kafka Definitive Guide, you've got iHeart Logs, uh, Event Driven Systems and Stream Processing, all kind of like different aspects of what's going on with Kafka here, so like the low level internals, the, um, the theory behind the distributed commit log, um, architectural principles, all of this stuff you can get from these books. Again, I'll share the links with the slides when I put them on Twitter. Um, go and try out Kafka on Confluent Cloud. So Confluent are paying for me to be here today, so kind of I should mention them really. Um, you've got Confluent Platform as a hosted managed service um, within Confluent Cloud. You get various different uh, money off your bill there. Uh, there's another code you can use in the uh, corner that's there as well. So go and give it a try. So you've just got Kafka cluster, go and try different things. You've got manage Kafka Connect, you've got manage KSQL DB as well. You got started with Kafka. Now you want to go and learn more different things with it. You can go to developer.confluent.io and here you can get access to all sorts of tutorials and blogs and podcasts and all sorts of useful stuff to actually take you on your Kafka journey. And hopefully you'll want to be part of the uh, Kafka and Confluent community. So there's the Confluent uh, community Slack group. There's, I think, like 18,000 people on that now. So go along to the different channels there. There's like a hashtag, uh, a, a connect channel, a KSQL DB channel, and a whole bunch more there. There's more talks that I've done on sort of all different aspects. There's even a YouTube channel. It's uh, courtesy of the, the lockdown. I've had time to start. Um, and I post various, mostly Kafka Connect stuff on there as well. So go and look those up. Uh, with that, I think my voice has finally given up, but uh, thank you very much for listening. The slides, the recording will be online. Follow me on Twitter, at I'm off, um, and I'll be tweeting those. If anyone wants to unmute themselves and ask questions, feel free, but I'm going to mute myself. Uh... Thank you very much, Robin, for your talk. Actually, I have a question, as long as, sure. you, as you can share it. Uh, what are the, some of the future plans for KSQL DB? Um, that's a good question. There's, so Kafka has what are called KIPs. I'm sure you're familiar with them. Kafka improved proposals. KSQL DB has got clips. So if you go to the KSQL GitHub repository, you can see uh, the clips that have been published there. So like the Java clients is a good example where there was a clip for that, I think like, like six or nine months ago. So you can follow the kind of like the plans and the, um, the direction for it there. Anyone have any more questions? Uh, hello, Robin. Uh, I have a Hi. question. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, is there in, in is there a way to somehow process a message that has already been received? What I mean? So let's say you have a stream that you get values of temperature, let's say, and then you want to create a new stream. Uh, let's say you get the values every five minutes and then you want to create a new stream that has the values the records that uh, the temperature is over 30 degrees okay uh, can you process the latest message so let's say if you create the stream but the stream uh, have the stream to emit the value if the latest temperature that was received let's say two minutes ago was over 30 degrees can you do something like that if if, if i don't know if my question was clear so 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 to create a stream based on the current state of values, kind of something mm -hmm. like that, if, I, if I'm clear. Is this thing possible? So, no, sorry, so, so try, I, I didn't quite follow, can you ask it again? 
Yeah, so let's say you have a you have a stream, okay, that, mm -hmm. uh, a stream of uh, temperature values. It's connected mm -hmm. to a temperature sensor, okay, that emits uh, values every five uh, minutes. So you get a temperature value every five minutes, okay, mm -hmm. and you want to create a monitoring system on it, uh, so that you want to make a new stream that contains all the records where the value, the temperature value, is over uh, thirty degrees or something, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's say at time uh, at midnight, I get a message with a temperature value, and I create the stream at midnight plus two minutes. Mm -hmm. So is it possible somehow to get and the, and the latest temperature I got at midnight was over the thirty degrees? Yes. Is there a way yeah, to, to? You can if when, I, when you yeah. when you create a stream, you can you specify the offset. So you say to Kafka to K C equal db. I would like to read either from the beginning of the topic or the okay. end of the topic. So if yeah, you say you read it from the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but if I say the beginning, the beginning may be like, you know, a few days ago. Can I mm -hmm. say, can I specify an offset like one hour ago or something like that? So in case equal DB at the moment, you can only specify earliest or latest. Okay. Um, one option you have is specify earliest but you can use the message timestamp as a predicate. So the performance will not be good because it will go back to the beginning or scan through um, until it gets to a, a timestamp that matches your predicate. So you'd say where, where real time is greater than now minus an hour or something like that. Okay. Um, if you're using Kafka streams, then you have a lower level API and you can actually go into a direct offset. But in case equal DV, that's all you can do at the moment. Okay, so in case streams uh, in the API, uh, you could do something like that, you say. Is it, uh, are there any plans to expose some uh, this functionality maybe or? Uh, it's, it's, it's a well-known limitation. Um, okay. So with KSQL DB, it's, it's a community project. So if you log an issue or search for existing issues and upload them, um, that helps drive the roadmap in terms of what functionality gets focused on. I was asked to implement uh, this thing uh, we're using KSQL DB. And I was asked to mm -hmm. implement this uh, functionality just a week ago. Okay. So just uh, okay. Um, so okay. if you if you come along to the uh, let's show you if you come along to the the Slack group, there's a a case equal DB channel. So that's okay. a good place to ask these kind of questions as well. Ah, okay. Okay, I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Hi, this is Johnny. Thank you, Robin, for the presentation. Uh, I have actually uh, uh, two questions. One of them may, may seem uh, a little dumb because I'm not uh, familiar with the KSQL DB. But I would like to ask you, uh, you say the multiple times that it's uh, baked by Kafka Topic. So, uh, and you say it as well, it's not, a, it's not a storage layer, like it's not a database. So uh, I'm not sure what it is like. Is it uh, only Kafka Topics? Uh, it's a, dat a state database or? Like so, I, yeah. So K K SQL DB is backed by Kafka Topics. It's driven by Kafka Topics. It also uses RocksDB uh, for its state store. So any state is stored within RocksDB internally within K SQL DB. So you don't, as a user of K SQL DB, you don't see that. It's just like how it works. But that's that's the state store that you can query with a pull query when you do key value lookups. And RocksDB, the change log is actually a Kafka topic, which is kind of clever. So if you lose your RocksDB, that change log is used to rebuild that state on another node. Okay, uh, uh, thank you for the, the answer. Uh, so uh, uh, if, if we say we want to maintain, so we, we don't have a retention like we, like we have in the log retention for Kafka. Like if I create some a K table on top of some, uh, some topics, uh, can I uh, keep that da data there, or like uh, there should be always a stream of data to uh, to keep that state? If it's a table, um, trying to think. So the when you build the table, it'll read from the beginning of the topic if you've told it to. So that topic would need to be compacted for you to get every single value. Um, if you're building aggregates in a table, I think there's a window, a, a retention time that you can set on it, but I would need to go and check. 
Okay, so yeah, th thank you. So uh, like, even if I created a table, a K table with a windowing, at the, at the end of the point, I need to take that data, stream that data again to some other point, to some like uh, some, uh, some other DB or storage layer that I can uh, save that data there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it, it's still a Kafka, so it, it's, the state exists within RocksDB and you can query that using these pull queries, but it's also backed by a Kafka topic and that Kafka topic you can stream down to like a database or somewhere else, totally. Okay, uh, sorry guys, one last question. Uh, in, the, in the streaming, <laughs> in the streaming flow, I saw you use multiple times the, uh, the, the, the SQL uh, statements. And I would like to ask if I can put there any um, uh, changing parameter. For example, um, if I do a select with filtering for a field that uh, may change, like for the time, for the current time, for the current mm -hmm. date, and the current date may change. Like the current date today is uh, the 7th, yeah. tomorrow is 8th. Is there any possibility to put there any statement with, with the, like with changing values? So what you can do is a stream table join and your table, so in the example I showed you, the table was holding customer information, but a table is just a Kafka, is backed by a Kafka topic and a table could hold um, predicate values. So you could do a join uh, based on like date predicate and have a, a field within your Kafka table, so a case equal DB table, which had the predicate to use and you just put a new message onto that topic to replace that, that value when you want to. And you can actually, within case equal DB, use insert statements directly. Um, so you do it using a table. So you can, but it's not like, you can't do like bind variables or something like that. It's, um, you do it using a, a stream table join. Very interesting. There's a talk actually, if you go and have a look at this talk here, the um, on track with Apache Kafka, this goes through some of those examples, um, particularly that one there that I've just mentioned of using a, a configurable table. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, one last let's thing. Take, you... uh, let's take last question from the chat, Robin. Uh, Mickey asks, how do you handle errors in case SQL DB? Let's even take it as a production grade, case SQL DB. Um, so if you have errors, um, they'll get written to the case SQL DB server log. So if you have a deserialization error or something like that, um, it'll simply skip the particular message um, so something like Kafka Connect has got dead letter queue handling and things like that. Case equal DB doesn't have that yet, um, so you would need to work around that. All right. Thanks a lot, Robin, for joining us today. Okay. If anyone has more questions, come along to the, the Slack group, the Case equal DB channel, or whatever, and um, feel free to post them there. Sure. Thanks, Robin. Thanks everyone for joining. Goodbye. Thanks.